blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, that all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. There's a lot of Israelites and Gentiles that continue to confuse the day of the Lord with the great tribulation. Some Israelites transpose events that is said to happen during the day of the Lord for the great tribulation. Israelites, it's extremely important for you to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. Don't use human wisdom to comprehend what is spiritual. We must depend on the Holy Spirit to tell us the things to come. If we rely on our own understanding to decode only what the Holy Spirit can explain, the spirit of confusion will mislead you in the end times. Israelites, it's important for you to silence the strange voices speaking to you. The kingdom of darkness will try to indoctrinate you with falsehoods to confuse you. Don't give the Satans the opportunity to deceive you at the last hour. Shut off all outside noise to allow the Most High to renew the spirit of your mind with truth. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Israelites, if you continue to allow religious doctrines to control your beliefs, the truth the Most High is making available won't have any value to you. You will give opportunities to unclean spirits to cause you to blaspheme the Most High. In addition, you give the Satans permission to deceive you. The scripture said the truth will make us free. We must allow the truth of the Most High's words to release us from every religious indoctrinations and strongholds. We cannot come into the awakening with religious doctrines as the foundational beliefs of all Israelites and Gentiles in the awakening. There is no truth in Satan and his ministers. The heathens made a covenant with death and hell to do the will of Satan. Every religious doctrine heard from the mother harlot and her daughters is based off of falsehoods. Remember, they take refuge in their lies. Nothing they have taught to you in their religious temples are of the Most High. That is why the mother harlot and her daughters will fall on the day of the Lord. We must listen to the Most High and come out of her. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Right before my recent time off from YouTube, I had a vision that revealed the urgency of the people of the Most High needing to come out of religion as a whole. Destruction is coming upon the church. The people of the Most High need to cut ties with every form of religion. Israelites, it's extremely important for you to come out of her. The high-level workers of iniquity and religion use you as a shield. They know the moment you leave, judgment will come upon them swiftly. Israelites, be wise at this time. Don't allow the ministers of Satan and those who are being deceived by Satan's ministers to steal the good seed the Most High is planting in his people. The day of the Lord is coming upon all the heathens. The clock is ticking on them. The times of the Gentiles are coming to an end. The church have misled a lot of the Gentile heathens and some Israelites into believing they are safe and in good standing with the Most High. Most Gentile heathens don't realize they were never close to the Most High. Some Israelites need to come to the realization you forsake the Most High when you accepted the God of this world as your Lord and Savior. A great majority of people are not in good standing with the Most High. That is why the road that leads to destruction is massive. Hell has enlarged itself. 
Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. The workers of iniquity through religion have deceived many into believing the Most High is happy with the inhabitants of the earth. When Satan and his angels choose to denounce the Most High to create their own paths, the Most High sent them here. When Adam and Eve believed Satan, the Most High sent them here to this earth to dwell among Satan and his wicked angels. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to this dark earth, for he had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. And he has continued, O Adam, to make war against thee, until he beguiled thee and made thee come out of the garden to this strange land, where all these trials have come to thee. And death, which God brought upon him, he has also brought to thee, O Adam, because thou did obey him and did transgress against God. Yet if thou hadst submitted and had been obedient to me and have kept my word, thou wouldst be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guest among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. The time have come for you to realize that this earth is not our home, indigenous black people. The Most High made Adam and Eve, as well as their descendants, to live in the garden, not this earth. Then Adam said to Eve, Behold, our hope is now cut off, and so is our trust to enter the garden. We no longer belong to the inhabitants of the garden, but henceforth we are earthy and of the dust, and of the inhabitants of the earth. We shall not return to the garden until the day in which God has promised to save us and to bring us again into the garden as he promised us. Indigenous black people, we were made to live in the garden. Because the first man Adam and the first woman Eve sinned by believing Satan El, the Most High sent them here to this earth to live out their punishment until he fulfilled the covenant he made with Adam and Eve. Then... When the angels heard these words, they all grieved over him and cursed Satan who had beguiled Adam until he came from the garden to misery, from life to death, from peace to trouble, and from gladness to a strange land. The Most High judged Adam and his seed, as well as the Satans. You can read in the book of Enoch for yourself of the judgments against the fallen angels, as well as the seed of Adam. The Most High cursed the ground when Adam listened to the voice of his wife over the Most High. I know you were taught that the Most High cursed Adam. The Most High did not curse Adam. He cursed the ground. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. All the inhabitants of the earth are under some sort of judgment. The trees and plants as well as the animals are crying out to the Most High. The scriptures in the book of Matthew let us know that the earth is groaning. Israelites, you're not the only ones suffering on this earth. The animals are suffering when the heathens crossbreed the animals to make an abominable species coming from their wicked imaginations. The greedy Gentile heathens plundering the earth of its natural resources and minerals is destroying the earth. The scripture said in the book of Romans that all of the creation is pleading and can't wait for the manifestations of the sons of God to bring order to this place. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject of vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, 
which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. It's only the Gentile heathens who believe that the Most High is pleased with them. Despite doing the will of Satan on the earth, they will go to heaven to live happily ever after with the Most High. How is the Most High pleased with you when you void his laws? You teach that the laws are done away with while uplifting the laws that go against the will of the Most High. A lot of Gentile heathens and Israelites are deceiving to believing the Most High is pleased with them. If the Most High was pleased with the inhabitants of the earth, the road that leads to life wouldn't be narrow. What the Most High calls sin, the spiritual wickedness in high places, create laws to redefine sin. They create executive orders to protect the sinners and to encourage the destructive behaviors. The high-level workers of iniquity disguise sin in the beast culture. That is why a great majority of people are unaware that they are separated from the Most High. Sin separates you from the Most High. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. A great majority of people in the beast culture believe they are close to the Most High while being separated from him. The reason so many are separated, the Gentile heathens who run their nations with Satan force the will of Satan on the people as well as deceive many people into believing their doctrines and laws are from the Most High. Israelites and Gentiles, the Most High is not the God being praised in the beast system, nor is the Most High being served in the beast culture. The time have come for you to recognize Satan among you. The Most High cast Satan and his angels to the earth as a form of punishment. Everyone who listened to Satan made Satan their God. They dwell here with the rest of the fallen angel they made their gods. Certain angels are locked away while a great majority continue to roam this earth freely. You heard how the Most High sent Adam and Eve to dwell on the earth when they made Satan their God unknowingly. And the Lord said unto Adam and Eve, You transgress of your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I had placed you. Of your own free will have you transgressed through your desire for divinity, greatness, and exalt state such as I have, so that I deprive you of the bright nature in which you then were, and I made you come out of the garden to this land rough and full of trouble. Israelites, you heard how the Most High said to Adam and Eve, they sin by their own free will. The spirit of blasphemy is operating in a lot of people to come against the Most High for making us dwell among Satan and his hosts. Blaming the Most High for a decision Adam and Eve made freely is insane. The Most High warned Adam and Eve when he gave them the laws to the garden. The Most High told Adam, you can eat freely from the trees in the garden. The Most High said to Adam, do not eat from one particular tree. The tree that was planted by Satan out, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Most High warned them. Both Adam and Eve decided to eat from the tree despite the Most High warning them of the consequences. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Just like today, many people are making their own life choices, excluding the Most High. When they don't receive their desired outcome, they blame the Most High. The Most High had nothing to do with a lot of the decisions many of you made in your life. If you don't like the outcome to your choices, you should blame yourself, not the Most High. Most people consult with the Most High after they've decided. Most people have the mentality of my body, my life, my choice. Make sure you keep the same energy when your choices fail you. The Most High said to Adam, if I didn't warn you about the tree, you would have blamed me for your mistakes. The Most High went on to say to Adam, if I didn't warn you, then your downfall would have been on me. The Most High said, because I warned you, you alone is responsible for your own actions. 
Not too many people alive today can take accountability for their actions. They're always looking for someone else to blame. Then I commanded thee concerning the tree that thou eat not thereof. Yet I knew that Satan, who deceived himself, would also deceive thee. So I made known to thee by means of the tree not to come near him. And I told thee not to eat of the fruit thereof, nor to taste of it, nor yet to sit under it, nor to yield to it. Had I not been and spoken to thee, O Adam, concerning the tree, and had I left thee without a commandment, and thou hadst sin, it would have been an offense on my part. For not having given thee any order, thou wouldest turn around and blame me for it. But I commanded thee, and warned thee, and thou didst fall, so that my creatures cannot blame me, but the blame rests on them alone. Despite the Most High warning Adam about the tree, he decided to eat from the tree anyway. The awakening is happening to warn the people in this generation of the prophecies said to unfold in the end times. The Most High is giving his people time to repent and to get it right. When the great tribulation and the day of the Lord come, no one in this generation can say, I didn't know. That is why the gospel of the kingdom is being heard as a witness to all nations before the end comes. Israelites, don't allow people who cannot take responsibility for their actions cause you to blaspheme the most high for sins you did willingly. I have heard people saying, what kind of God is this that would allow people to suffer while watching? The very people who say these things are workers of iniquity sent by the Satans to rattle you up as well as to get you to come from under the protection of the Most High. They want you to blame the Most High for your oppression. The Most High warned our ancestors throughout the scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 28, many Israelites love to quote from, warned our ancestors. The scriptures is also warning us. Joshua, the son of Nun, told the Israelites in his generation, choose this day who you will serve. Joshua let his people know that he chose to serve the Most High, the God of Israel. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Israelites and indigenous black people all over the world, Make sure your choices reflect the will of the Most High. Israelites, do not let Satan deceive you with that blasphemous spirit. Repent so that you can find forgiveness of sins. Adam and Eve made Satan their God when they believed Satan. Just like how many of you made Satan your God in the beast system unknowingly. Adam and Eve didn't know they would come under Satan when they believed him. Just like some of you don't know what is coming your way because you believe Satan through religious doctrines. By believing their doctrines, you made Satan your God. Deception is how Satan operates. The scripture says Satan deceived the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. This is why the scripture said no one can serve two masters. You can't serve the most high and the idols of the heathens. It won't work. The Most High won't share his glory with anyone. Israelites and Gentiles who have returned to serve the Most High, don't let demonic doctrines steal the good seed the Most High is planting in you. You can't sit at the table of the Most High in the awakening and the table of Satan in religion. You would have to choose. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Everyone who listens to Satan and accepts his offers are subject to him. Israelites, that is why the Most High warned us in the scriptures not to make covenants with the heathens and with their gods. The heathens will make you believe one thing and their intentions never align with what they led you to believe. Their actions never match their words. That is why you shouldn't make any agreements with the heathens and with their gods. Can you imagine how many hidden covenants we've made in the beast system unknowingly? How many evil covenants have you established with religion alone? 
the workers of iniquity made a graven image of their God and convinced the Israelites that their God is your God. Despite the most high saying in the scriptures, we were made in his image and likeness. In addition, the laws of the most high forbid his people to make graven images. Israelites make no covenants with the heathens and with their gods. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. Israelites, I say all of this to you for you to understand the wrath of the Most High that is coming on the heathens and the trials and tribulation that will cause trouble for Jacob is justified. No matter how many gods the Gentile heathens create to give them salvation, the God of Israel will judge the nations for their wickedness. Israelites, the day of the Lord and the great tribulations are two different time period. One come before the other. The great tribulation is first. The day of the Lord follows. I have heard Israelites mistake the great tribulation as the time the Most High would judge the nations. I have heard Israelites say during the great tribulation, we won't be around. There are countless beliefs surrounding the great tribulation in the day of the Lord. To the Israelites who believe you won't be around for the great tribulation, the book of Revelation prophesied that there was a people that was given white robes. They are the people that came out of the great tribulation. And one of the elders answered saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. We have to let the scriptures speak. I know that religion have deceived many of you into believing you will never be held accountable for anything in your life because King Jesus did everything for you. Anyone who reads the scriptures will see otherwise. The great tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. This is when the Most High will put his people into the refiner to purify them. This is when the Most High will test the spirits of his people as well as purge the rebels from among his people. Remember, two thirds of our people will perish for their unfaithfulness. The remaining one third, the Most High will cleanse their hearts. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass, that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. The Most High have many purpose for the Great Tribulation. He will use the Antichrist to purge a lot of Israelites, as well as to strengthen and purify the remaining one-third. That is how the Most High will accomplish purging the rebels from among his people, as well as test the righteous faithfulness towards him. During the great tribulation is when the multiple beasts will have power in the earth. The beasts are kings. They are the kings that is ruling in the Gentile nations. Some Israelites are led to believe the great tribulation is judgment on the Gentiles. That is false. The great tribulation is not about the heathens, but you Israelites. If you're an Israelite alive at that time, you will experience hardship. That is why it's the time of Jacob's trouble. The word of God is not returning to redeem and deliver you when you are at peace. There will be trouble. During the time of the great tribulation, it will be greater trouble for Jacob. Israelites, the time have come for you to put an end to the fairy tales told to you in religion. The kings of the earth that rule in the Gentile kingdoms will persecute you just like they have been doing from the beginning. This will be the time if you don't worship the beast, you will die. This is also the time where you have to have the mark of the beast to buy or sell. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Whose deadly wound was healed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark 
in their right hand or in their foreheads. By the way, I know many people are expecting some sort of high-tech device that will be inserted into the people's hand or forehead in order to buy or sell. I have come to find that the mark of the beast is actually the name of the beast that will be written on the forehead or hand. I know a lot of people are expecting some sort of high-tech device. The book of Revelation prophesied about the wrath of the Most High that will come on all people who had the mark. The book of Revelation said that the mark of the beast was actually the name of the beast. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The scripture said that the second beast will make everyone receive the mark of the first beast. A few weeks ago, you learned the identity of the first beast. We all know the first beast is the long-awaited Jewish Messiah, the Antichrist. He will declare himself to be the Most High. The mother harlot already pre-programmed you to believe he was God in the flesh already. A lot of people already have his name. Many of you pray in his name. The workers of iniquity already condition you to accept the beast in his name. That is why the scripture said everyone whose name is not written in the book of life will worship the beast. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. I have heard many different beliefs surrounding the Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord. Israelites, the Great Tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. This is a time period you will be persecuted. All Israelites alive at that time will be put into the refiner. I know many of you believe we suffered enough. If our people learned their lesson, they would have returned to the Most High a long time ago. Also, we was judged as a people. We have to face the consequences to our sins. That is why we are enduring a lot before Jacob could reign. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Jacob's reign is after the time of the Gentiles. The day of the Lord will come after the great tribulation is over. The end of our troubles and judgments is the sign of the Gentile reign has come to an end. The day of the Lord is not about the Israelites, but about the Gentiles. When the Gentiles face their judgment, we will be redeemed. We won't be scattered in all the nations to see the word of God execute the wrath of the Most High on the Gentile nations. We will be gathered to our land while the day of darkness come upon all the Gentile heathens. Some Israelites believe the destruction of Babylon will take place any day now. The destabilization of any nation today is a part of the prophecy of nations rising against other nations. The Most High is the one that would take vengeance on the mother harlot for all it has done. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. The kings of the earth can't take vengeance on the mother harlot for all she has done. The Most High is the only one capable by the word of God to make Babylon the great desolate. The destruction of Babylon will happen on the day of the Lord, along with all her daughters who was made rich with their association with her. The day of the Lord is the day the Most High will repay to the Gentile heathens for all they have done. Before we dig deep into the Gentiles' judgment on the day of the Lord, Israelites, it's important for you to understand that the wrath of the Most High coming upon the heathens is justified. The Most High gave the Gentiles plenty of time to repent. The Gentiles are not innocent. They chose to serve Satan. They are not guiltless. They took Satan's offers. Satan was confident in the kingdoms he made on the earth. That is why he offered all the kingdoms of this world to the word of God if he would bow down and worship him. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them 
and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Satan controlled the high-level workers of iniquity that is the face to the governments in the Gentile nations. All the kings of this earth serve Satan. That is how the dragon is able to give the multiple beasts that will rise on the earth its seat and great authority. The scriptures describe the first beast who is the Antichrist as a beast that rise out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns. On the head of the ten horns are ten crowns. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. Israelites, each one of those horns represents a king on this earth. As you heard in the scripture, the dragon gave the beast his power and great authority. The people who lead the Gentile nations know exactly what they are dealing with. They work together with the Satans to deceive you. Remember I said to you last week, the root cause to our issues is that Satan now is very angry with the seed of Adam. He has waged war with Adam's descendants. There's a spiritual war that you and I cannot see but very active in this world today. This war has been happening from the very beginning. The Gentile heathens that interact with the Satans conspire with the Satans to destroy the seed of Adam. Satan promised to give them great kingdoms and power if they follow him. The Gentiles did exactly that. They conspired against the Israelites to cut them off from being a nation. They made sure the real Israelite culture was erased. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The workers of iniquity were successful in their conspiracy to cut us off from being a nation. They successfully taken the Israelite heritage for themselves. They even changed the given name of the people the Most High called after his name. For a very long time, many people believed the imposters are the chosen people. Many Israelites had no idea they were the apple of the Most High's eyes. We were struggling as a people and we was confused about the hate we received from the heathens all over the world. If the Most High didn't wake his people up from their slumber, we would have continued in the falsehoods the Gentiles created to cut us off from being a people. The Gentiles know exactly who they are conspiring against. The scriptures in the book of Psalms said they have taken crafty counsel against the Most High's hidden ones. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Until this day, the Gentiles are looking for ways to prolong their reign on the earth. The scriptures in the book of Psalms went on to list the names of the Gentile heathens who came together to cut us off from being a nation. The scriptures said they are confederate against us. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assur also is joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot, Selah. I find it interesting that the impostors and scholars of this world proclaim the ten tribes of Israel is lost. No one know where they are today, yet the nations specified in the scriptures knew who they were and they helped to cut them off from being a people. Israelites, our ancestors may have disobeyed the Most High. However, they kept good records. That is why the Romans burned down the temple on multiple occasions. Despite the scriptures being taken and hidden from us, the Most High have a way of spreading his living words. Our fathers, the progenitor to the tribes of Israel, they knew the fate of their children long before our generation existed. Israelites, it's impossible for the Gentiles to have no knowledge to where the tribes are today when they are holding them in captivity in their nations. Naphtali, the son of Jacob, exposed who would take the Israelites into captivity. And I saw, for I was there, and behold, a holy writing appeared to us, saying, Assyrians, Medes, Persians, Chaldeans, Syrians, 
shall possess in captivity the twelve tribes of Israel. The Gentile heathens you heard mentioned by Naphtali, the son of Jacob, reveal who took the Israelites into captivity. The Assyrians, Medes, Persians, Chaldeans, and Syrians will possess the 12 tribes of Israel in captivity. Who are these people today? I bet if you ask them, they won't have any knowledge to their sins and the sins of their fathers. Israelites, there's a little over 70 nations on this earth. You mean to tell me the one nation that was chosen by the Most High went missing and nobody know where they are? Yet we have impostors who claim to be of the tribe of Judah, but they have no idea where the rest of their people are. The Gentile heathens will hang on to the Israelite heritage, despite knowing that they are not of the bloodline of Jacob. Israelites, this is the wickedness the Gentile heathens did to cut us off from being a nation. They know full well what they are doing. Despite the Most High revealing the truth, they won't repent. They will continue to do the will of Satan, even in the days of their afflictions. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. The Gentiles will continue in their abominations. The Gentiles who blindly follow after their leaders are just as guilty. They enforce the doctrines and beliefs of their leaders. Like I said before, most Gentiles are patriots. They will do anything for their country. The Gentile heathens have helped the Satans destroy this earth. There's a reason the scripture said the earth is in the hands of the wicked. The Gentile heathens who control this earth with the Satans have caused many suffering on this earth. They give Satan access to do his will on this earth as long as the Satans give them the lust of their flesh. Oppressing the Israelites and stealing land, culture, and identity is not the only thing the Gentile heathens are guilty of. The heathens have taken the most high sacred possessions to put in their abominable temples. They polluted the Holy Land with their abominations. They have parted the Most High's land. The Most High's anger is hot against the Gentile heathens. That is why the day of the Lord is a day of vengeance. The Most High said vengeance is his, he will repay. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. The scripture said the earth is in the hands of the wicked for a reason. The Gentiles had no problem altering the words of the Most High. The Gentile heathens decided which scripture would be included in the authorized Bible. They banned many books that had the truth of the Most High's words. The Gentile heathens inserted themselves into the scriptures to get the world to worship them and Satan. The Gentile heathens have the sacred writings of our ancestors hidden in their secret vaults while making the altered version available to mislead the people. They purposely inserted lies to cause many to stumble. This is why the wrath of the Most High on the day of the Lord is justified. The Gentile heathens have done many awful things on this earth. Israelites, do not let the children of disobedience make you feel sorry for them. We are living in the time of our afflictions. What have they done to make our lives easier? They deceive us into serving idols to keep the wrath of the Most High on us. They oppress and stole a lot from us. They even imitate the prophecies of the Most High to deceive us. And in those times, there shall many stand up against the King of the South. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. The Gentile heathens have a lot of blood on their hands. They are not innocent from the multitude of charges against them from the Most High. There's a lot of things being done by the Gentiles we can't see. The Most High can see everything they do in secret. That is why the scripture said everything done in the dark will come to light. But there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. History, as well as what is happening in this world today, is a testimony against the Gentile heathens. The Most High gave the Gentile heathens more than enough time to repent of their sins. As you heard in the scripture, many won't repent. The day of the Lord, a day of darkness, is coming and full of the Most High's wrath because the abominations of the Gentile heathens is overflowing. 
Wars between nations will not justify the wickedness the Gentile heathens have allowed the Satans to do on this earth through them. There are a lot of Israelites who are deceived into feeling sorry for the Gentile heathens for the wrath that is coming upon them. Let me ask you, do they feel sorry for you because the Most High is judging his people now? Instead of helping you to return to your God, they gave you an idol that imitates your God to cause you to stumble even more. The day of the Lord must happen because the sins of the inhabitants of this earth is massive. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land a desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. A great majority of the Gentiles don't know what is coming their way. Religion deceived them into believing they would be raptured away. They won't be held accountable for the abominations they have done during the times of the Gentiles. As you have heard in the scriptures, the wrath of the Most High is fierce. We all can see how in every generation the fear of the Most High is decreasing. The people have become lawless because the spiritual wickedness in high places replace the laws of the Most High with the laws of men. They redefine sin. By doing this, it gave unclean spirits the opportunity to possess many in the end times. The spirit of homosexuality is running rampant in the beast culture because today's leaders don't see men and women lusting after strange flesh as an abomination. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Israelites, it's very important for you to understand the signs of the times. We are living in critical times. Allow the Holy Spirit to tell the truth. You don't want to be blindsided by the wrath of the Most High. I am glad that our redemption will come as soon as the Great Tribulation ends. I am also glad that we won't be in their nations to experience the day of the Lord with the Gentiles. Israelites, allow the truth to have a place in your heart. Don't fact check the truth with religious falsehoods. Nothing in the times of the Gentiles represents the Most High. Religion and the beast culture is full of misinformation. Remember, they hide behind their lies. All Gentiles and Israelites with an ear to hear, let them hear. Stay tuned for part three. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks. For mine eyes are upon all their ways, they are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double, because they have defiled my land. They have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. 